Hey, hey, Sam. Go ahead, Dre. Dre. Sorry, I had to get my recorder ready. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, buddy. Uh, I had a question for you, uh, not necessarily about this game, but the uh, the NCAA Football Oversight Committee had recommended the seven additional uh, up to seven additional spots for transfers. I was curious what your thoughts are. Is that is that a good thing for Arkansas? And uh, where do you, where do you stand on it? Well, we're not in a problem area with eighty five. You know the reason that it's in is now it we might be, you know, but uh, the reason I think they put the rule in is because, you know, that some coaches have left other programs and, you know, the kids run out of there before they get to know the coach and all those things, you end up at 70 on your roster, you know, and, and uh, I think it's a good thing. I think they had to do something, Trey, uh, simply because, you know, you can't lose a guy in the portal and then sign 25. And let's say you lose six guys in the portal every year and you're signing 25 before, you know, five years down the road, you're playing with a 50 man roster. And so I think it's good. Whether I think it will help us or not, I don't know. I think eventually it will. I don't, I'm not positive about next year. It just depends on how many kids decide they want to transfer. And uh, we're real tight right now with our scholarship numbers. So it just depends. Uh, but do I think it'll benefit fit us at some time or another? I absolutely do. And I think it's a necessary role. And with this game being 11 o'clock, how important is Thursday night sleep for your guys? And, uh, and just what changes, aside from just like bumping things up earlier, what, what changes in terms of y'all's game day? Stuff? You know, not a lot is going to change on Saturday, except we're going to uh, have a little less time between our um, pregame meal and our walkthroughs. Uh, it's going to take maybe up to 90 minutes, anywhere from 75 to 90 minutes to get to the stadium uh, on Saturday, just depending on traffic. Uh, so that's going to speed up a little bit. We're going to have our chapel in the evening instead of uh, the game day. Um, but not other than that, you know, that's why we trade. That's why we practice that those four or five days in a row. Uh, early in the morning, so you know our kids would know. Hey, we got to get up, get ready, and I think we'll be able to do that. You know, we told them last week uh, when we got to the to the evening meal that everything becomes the same now. Uh, you know, the only difference is you you get on a plane and you fly somewhere. Other than that, everything goes back to the same. So they handled it well last week. I think they will again. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Uh, Hey, hey, Sam, how you doing? Um, Trey Williams, you guys obviously thought it'd be good or else you wouldn't have recruited him, but um, has he surprised you at all? And in retrospect, how big a get how big a get was he? No, you know, I've been a Trey Williams fan for a long time. And, you know, especially when you go in the portal, I feel like we hit, you know, in the portal. Um, but when you see guys play, you and they're giving you trouble. And again, I had a couple first round, fortunate enough, had a couple first round tackles there at Georgia. Trey was, you know, he was hard to block with those guys. Um, I knew that uh, if we could get him, that he could solve uh, some of the pass rushing issues that we had, along with, you know, getting our guys better here. Um, but no, he really hasn't surprised me, Bob. I, I've, I've, I expected that he would play like he has. And, and then um, it worked pretty well last week having, having uh, Dave and Eric uh, down there in Arlington with you. Do you have any plans to take them or anybody else to Athens? Well, no. I think the next home game, I've already asked Coach Neighbors to come down against Auburn and be down there, and I'm going to ask a couple of others. Uh, but no, I haven't talked to him this way. I think Coach might have – I know Coach Van Horn's in practice. I think Coach must have started practice, so – I'm sure they'll they'll put their practice around uh, whatever time the Hogs play, though. And, and you said something I thought was really interesting. You said you felt I, th I think I got this right. You said you felt more you guys would be more powerful with them on the sidelines. I don't think I've ever heard another coach say something like that. Um, what, what did you mean by that exactly? Well, I think all three of us wanted to beat A and M. I think um, all three of us. Our head coaches, we all kind of think uh, similar. I know we have our differences, 
Um, but I felt um, I, it put me in a little bit of a calm seeing those guys, you know. Uh, I've been a fan. You know, I haven't known Coach Muss. You know, he wasn't here when I was here the first time, but Coach Van Horn, you know, I've been in all kind of him for a long time. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I've had so much respect for him for such a long time. And I just felt in a calm, hey, I got Dave Van Horn down here, and Eric Musmo down here. Uh, we're going to go get after him. And that's just what I felt. Okay. Th thank you. Mm -hmm. Tom? Hey, Sam, I caught a podcast with you from this summer where you were talking to a guy who covers Georgia and you said that you had, hadn't really talked to Kirby much before an on the field Alabama Arkansas game. Uh, after the game, it was 14 or 15, do you recall? Oh, when did I talk to Kirby? Yeah, was it the 14 game here? 14, 14 here. Yeah. 14 here, and he just came over and said that when he gets a job, he's going to make it hard for me not to go with him. And I told him, you better go back and look at the tape before you get to saying all that stuff. And he <laughs> laughed. And I, you know, I'm not one of them, you know, calling guys and writing them notes and I, I, that ain't my style. So I just waited and we went over there and played him. He said some nice things then. And then whenever he got the job, he had his agent reach out to me. You know, uh, you've talked about the Herschel Walker era at Georgia. Like, like it, was it just because he was a badass or you like the way yes. he was the ball? He sure was, man. And I mean, it was, you know, at 1980, I'm, you know, I'm in high school. You know, I'm graduating in 80. And uh, yeah, yes, I mean, he's the biggest, fastest guy I'd ever seen. And they were rolling, you know, so yeah, that's where it started. Okay. And then just how do you start to slow the Georgia offense? You know, what are the keys to slowing them down? What do you got to do? Well, hopefully we have a game plan that'll do that, but we have to, we have to play hard. We have to be us. Um, we can't give up any type of big plays on them. You know, that, 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 that stadium will go crazy. You know, we have to make them earn everything. We have to be, to be honest with you, I told the team yesterday, we have to be the best tacklers that we've been all year. We have to be able to get these big backs on the ground. And we're going to be in some one-on-one -on -one situation. We've got to get them on the ground. And uh, offensively, we have to break tackles because even if we block them all up, there's going to be somebody close to that ball carrier or that receiver, and we have to break tackles. If we do that, we'll, we'll have a chance. Thanks. Hey. Yeah, you know, Sam, this time last week, everyone was talking about, you know, how great A&M's defense is. How comp, you know, what, what's the difference in, in Georgia's defense is kind of is what you faced last week? Well, similarities are uh, they're both really big and they both run the ball. They both play really hard. Um, you know, I don't know what the difference would be. Um, you know, I obviously – know the kids at Georgia better than I did at A&M. Um, I'd say Georgia has a tremendous amount of depth, so they can just roll players and roll players. A&M had good depth as well, but I think Georgia probably just has more depth there. Um, and they're a little scarier because I'm more familiar with what they're going to do to us and what we have to do to stop them. So surprising that concerning what they lost last year in graduation that they're as deep as they are defensively no not at all i mean i think they've been one or two in the nation in recruiting for a long time or i know they've been top five uh, for a long time they know how to get it done in recruiting and kirby understands it's a line of scrimmage league and that's re really i mean they have so many good players but really they're really good on the defensive and offensive line, and that's where it starts. Thank you. Otis. Coach, when you came here, you talked about wanting to be able to walk on program. You look at your linebackers. you got three linebackers there that 
it's good a college probably trio as there is in the country. Somebody might have better pro prospects, but two of the kids, Hayden came here for a semester without a scholarship. Uh, Grant walked on, and then you got Jackson Woodard, you know, back there as a walk on. Is that is your linebacker room about as good of an example of what a walk on program can do for the for Hogs? Yeah, that's really a great observation, and and uh, you know, it's a little bit Arkansas. Um, and I say that in a great way in the fact that those kids, um, you know, anytime you walk on, you, you have a chip on your shoulder, you know, you have something to prove. Uh, the difference in those guys, a lot of times you'll get a walk on and he'll put him on scholarship and he'll take it to the house on you. You know, I mean, he's done. That was his goal. Um, you get some walk ons from your state. Uh, that's just part of the process. They get there and then they take it to a new level and, and obviously Henry's done that and certainly Grant has. And, and, uh, but yeah, that's a good observation and it's true. I mean, it really is. Coach earlier this week, you talked about the, the challenges that all the blitzes that that coach Lanning has presents having gone against him and been in like staff meetings, does that give you any type of advantage or is it kind of negated by the fact that he's also familiar with you? Well, that's the problem. You know, he knows I know, and he's going to give me a different look than what what he's given somebody else. And then, you know, instead of coming from one side, it's going to be the other side. And uh, so, yeah, he knows. I mean, he knows Coach Kenny was there. I was there. I mean, he knows we know what Georgia does. And and I just – he might just say, this is what we do, and try to block us. You know, the other thing he might – so that's the beauty of college coaching or any coaching – is trying to outwit the other guy and just make sure you don't screw your own team up, you know, uh, by getting too, uh, uh, giving each other too much credit. And then also I've noticed the last couple of weeks, I think Bishop and Clark have rotated quite a bit at that cornerback yeah. spot. Uh, do you like what that rotation is like, or would you maybe like one of those guys to, to assert themselves as, as the guy? As long as they're both playing well, you know, you're keeping a fresher guy out there. As long as they're both playing well, you know, I, 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 I'm become a more the merrier type guy. You know, the more you can play, the better off your camaraderie on your team is. Uh, certainly the better off your depth becomes. So, no, I'm not too worried about it. The two kids seem to handle it well, you know. Uh, so, no, at this point, I, I, I like how it's going out there. Got it. Hey, Coach, I know, I know I've asked you about Traylon Smith recently, and, you know, he said he's dealt with some health stuff, but how important has he been, you know, kind of setting the tone in the running game early in the last couple of weeks with some big runs? Yeah, I think, you know, you can look at our our running back room and, and everybody got an opinion, and it's like, well, this guy's better than him if he got this many reps and this, that, and other, um, you know, because we're running four of them. Who's the best back? Um, but the bottom line is Smitty is our fire plug. I mean, he's our starter, you know. Um, so that's that, and he may be our best back. You, you understand what I'm saying, but he is, uh, he's the guy in there and he's, we know that he's going to run like heck when that game starts. And, uh, and so there, that's for, therefore, that's one of the reasons why, because we know he can bring that early juice to our football team. And it's your other cornerback spot. I'm just curious what you thought about Mo Brown's year to this point. I think he's playing really, really well. I mean, he's playing physical. He's had some nice picks, major picks in games. Um, but I think his, he's, he's playing with a lot of confidence, you know, and, and I've been really, really happy with him as well as so as Barry and, and Sam. Last call for questions. All right, that wraps up. Thanks, Coach. Go Hogs. Thank you all. Thank you.